everybody. Welcome to Make Your Day Count. I'm Lindsay Roberts, and today let's make our day count for ourselves, for our families, for the kingdom of God, for our surroundings. Why not? Because it sounds so good. Let's just do it. I want to ask you a question. If you were sitting down and someone next to you was, let's just say they were on a phone conversation and paid no attention to you, but they were talking super loud on their phone, and they said, I'm just so bitter. Wouldn't that spark your curiosity? You want to know who's on the other end and what they're saying, what they're talking about? How about if they said, I'm just so much better? Wouldn't that spark your curiosity and wonder what was going on, that they're so much better over it? And if it was, which would you pick? Would you rather be bitter? Would you rather be better? And then ultimately, sweet revenge. Bitter, better, or sweet revenge? Well, sweet revenge sounds like bitter. Nope, that's not what the Bible talks about. Sweet revenge is when God takes vengeance and it's the restoration and the restitution that is rightfully due to you and you don't have to get your hands dirty. Bitter, better, or sweet revenge. I want to talk to you today about all three. If you have your book, Discover Your True Worth, Becoming the Woman God Created You to Be, it is in chapter 10, page 115. Discover your true worth, becoming the woman God created you to be. If you don't have your book, 844-828-1412, 844-828-1412, any Seed Faith gift that you choose, your best Seed Faith gift into the ministry, 844-828-1412. I pray it's a blessing. So we're going to talk today about bitter, better, or sweet revenge. Bitter, sweet revenge, better. How do you get to all of that? if you're still bitter, if you want to get better. And if you just chose to get better, what is sweet revenge? Is that going to put you backwards instead of forwards? Let's talk about that because I believe it's God's answer to a lot of situations that we might not have answers to by ourselves. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back.
of Make Your Day Count with Lindsay Roberts is online now, and it's loaded with encouragement for you from God's life-giving Word. Read on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Go to richardroberts.org to read this free online issue of Make Your Day Count with Lindsay Roberts. Lindsay's brand new book, Discover Your True Worth, Becoming the Woman God Created You to Be, is now available to order. For any person who has ever suffered, if you're hurting, if you've been hurting, if you don't know a way out, the book is for you to find a compass that will point you to Jesus. You may think there's no way God can use you, but Lindsay shows how his power is made perfect in your weakness, and it can help you be all that God has called you to be. I'm excited about Lindsay's new book, Discover Your True Worth, Becoming the Woman God Created You to Be. Lindsay is an amazing author, speaker, communicator. I know this book will bless you and inspire you, so I hope you'll pick up a copy for you and a friend. Be blessed today. Bishop T.D. Jakes writes, I see the message in Discover Your True Worth. It is one that will guide women who are on the journey to becoming all that God created them to be. Discover your true worth is a discovery. It's steps, it's stages. There are tools that the Bible has given to us and I like to convey those tools in everyday experiences. Kenneth Copeland writes, this book is wonderful and powerfully anointed. Discover your true worth is a must read. You know, I wrote this book out of my heart, but I had someone say to me very, very recently, she felt like it filled a void. That may be the best explanation that I didn't even think of myself, but it's to fill a void. Joni Lamb writes, Lindsay Roberts walks readers through the Bible, telling the stories of women who, even in uncertainty, discovered their true identity in what God had destined them to accomplish. I highly recommend this engaging book. I've been privileged to know her, to hear her, to receive from her for many, many years. She is a voice of the Holy Spirit to the lives of everyone. I want you to get Discover Your True Worth. It's from Lindsay Roberts. That's all you need to know. To request Lindsay's book, Discover Your True Worth, go to richardroberts.org or call 1-844-828-1412. Again, that's richardroberts.org. So let's go back to my conversation about bitter, better, and sweet revenge. Have you ever, honestly answer it, honestly, have you ever been bitter against something? I'll answer it, yes. Did you get better by staying bitter? No, I got bitter by staying bitter. Did you want to get better? Even when I was bitter and I was in unforgiveness and bitterness and all of that, I really did want to get better. I didn't know how. And in addition, I wasn't sure if I wanted to let somebody be forgiven when I didn't feel like they deserved it. Bitter, better, or sweet revenge. Chapter, I know it's chapter 10. It is page 115. Bitter, better, sweet revenge and page 115. What has that got to do with today? You know, I think that the older I get, the more opportunities I get to stay bitter because now that I'm older and now that it's not just about me, 
because now I have a family and now I have a husband and children and this and that and it extends into different areas. I think I have more opportunities to be bitter and to be perfectly honest with you, when people do something against me, sometimes I can just boop, let it go. Not always, but sometimes I can. But when you do something against my family, different story altogether. Somebody was asking me about something that happened in a church service that they had gone through. And I said, they said, had I ever gone through anything like that? I said, well, let me tell you something. So the answer was yes. Um, before I married Richard, I went to a church service with Evelyn. And it was in a place that, you know, I didn't, at first I didn't even know if they'd recognize her. That was a foolish statement. You know, Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts' wife, of course they recognized her. And they made known that they recognized her. Now this is me before I married, coming out of law school, having opportunities to raise my hand and speak or not speak, talking to a book, a book, you know, instructing me back. This is not me understanding the way the world is when the world wants to be relatively ugly and then couple that, compound that, catapult that that it happened in church. And if you really want to springboard into bitterness, it was the pastor of the church. So we're sitting there and I don't know what row we were in, but we were in this church and, and I thought, okay, I'm going to appease Evelyn and go in and I'm going to be nice. I'm going to sit and I'm going to smile. And I didn't like the fact that some people were talking behind her back about how sweet she was. That was lovely, but you know when you get that, you kind of get the flip side and a lot of people talking behind her back about how they couldn't stand her husband and, you know, they tossed her into the mix. Okay, I'm in church now. And you know how people make sure they say it just loud enough that you hear it? So we're sitting down <laughs> and I thought, oh, thank God we've now sat down. We've kind of missed the whole crowd out there that could be really ruffling my feathers. And I noticed Evelyn's feathers were not ruffled. And I thought, either she didn't hear or I have a lot to learn. It was the second part. So the pastor gets up. Music was beautiful, to be honest with you. Absolutely beautiful. Unexpectedly beautiful. Pastor got up. He started quoting scripture. Lovely. Prayed a prayer. Double lovely. He was very eloquent. And then he started in on who was to become my father-in-law, Oral Roberts, looking at my mother-in-law, Evelyn Roberts, recognizing her and quasi acknowledging her and then blasting Oral. I was trying not to say something and I didn't. If I'd been alone, might've been different, but there was Evelyn. She was not moved. She was not shaken. She was not upset. And I'm sitting there. I'm processing, but truth be told, I'm learning. I'm processing. Little did I know that I was learning. And the service was over, and of course he is standing there, shaking everybody's hands, probably praying that Evelyn Roberts didn't walk through the line, and he got away with what he said. And here comes Evelyn, making a beeline right to the pastor, and I thought, this is gonna be good. And here Evelyn Roberts, I am in my very early 20s, not used to this, and Evelyn Roberts stretched out her, her hand and said, why isn't it a lovely day? She didn't say, isn't it a lovely sermon? Because it was not. She didn't say something lovely about the pastor because he was not. She played the Pollyanna game and found something lovely to say. And man, oh man, I did not want to play that game. I had a whole lot to say, but I kept my mouth shut. I was learning. And she just said, isn't it a lovely day? He shook her hand, dismissed her, and walked away. And I said something that I will never forget. I said it to myself, and I remember it to this day. Evelyn's been in heaven a long time, and I remember it to this day. I said, he has no idea the greatness he is in front of, but I do. He had no idea the great lady he was standing in front of, but I learned it that day. Evelyn Roberts, no matter what they threw at her, no matter what they threw at her husband, no matter what they threw at her children, grandchildren, or anybody else, she refused to be bitter. And I sat in the car with her and I was silent, but she wasn't. And I wish she would have been because I had a lot to say. 
And she said, what did you think of the service? I said, why didn't you ask me what I thought of the pastor? Why didn't you ask me what I thought about what he said? She said, what did you think? And I, 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 it just spewed out. It was time. It had to be said. And I just spewed it that I wanted to spew in front of the pastor, but I didn't. And then I said, what did you think of it? And she said, I thought I had a great opportunity to be bitter or to be better. And I chose better. And I looked at her and I thought to myself, lady, and I meant that. She was such a lady. You certainly did. You chose better, not bitter. Now, many times I've had an opportunity to follow that rule and I didn't. I chose not to. I chose to ignore her wisdom. And many times in choosing not to, not to be better but to be bitter, I paid the price for it. But on that day, I learned something that I hope I can say to you. And I hope that you can get and glean from chapter 10, bitter, better, or sweet revenge. I believe if she had been bitter, she could have never ro rose, risen above it. She could have never gotten better. And God would not have had the opportunity to handle the situation. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. And I found something else about that scripture. Vengeance does not mean us becoming revengeful. If you study out the word vengeance and you carry it out to the different words that it has meaning, there's some very, very interesting words in it. And it talks about God will repay. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So I always thought that meant, ha ha, they're going to get it. God's going to repay. No, that wasn't it at all. But part of what it means is the recompense, repaying the recompensation of reward, that if we become better and not bitter, God has an opportunity to compensate us, not just the person. That person may still be a jerk to this day. That person may not be alive to this day. That person may never know the great lady that was standing in front of him. That person may never Ever care about the great lady standing in front of him, my mother-in-law, Evelyn Roberts. But on that day, I learned a lesson that if we choose to be better, we choose God's way. God's way, you know, my way or the highway, God's way is the highway. It's the highest way possible to react or respond to situations that we probably will never be able to change, fix, or absolutely have some kind of control over. But instead, she chose the path of God. She chose the path of righteousness. She chose to be a lady. And in that, she didn't just choose to drop it because that might've been a little hard for me to swallow, but she chose to hand it over to Father God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. I will repay with the recompense of reward, the recompensation. Not only that is due the other person, I believe with every fiber of my soul that God is more than able to handle the other person, whoever the other person may be. But in addition to that, he recompensated Evelyn with peace and joy and love and graciousness and certainly my approval my learning experience approval, my honoring her that day, which was probably meaning more to her than anything that guy had to say. You see, we can choose to be bitter, we can choose to get better, and we can allow God the recompense of reward. So God can recompensate us for whatever it is that God himself, not some good guy, not some bad guy, or not some buddy in between, male, female, or whatever, in between. It may have been a male that offended you. It may have been a female that offended you. It may have been a child that offended you. It may have been a situation. It may have been a store clerk. It may have been something that you don't even know how you got offended, but you had the opportunity to pick up the offense and run with it. But she wouldn't take the bait. She wouldn't do it. And on that day, long before I got married, she taught me a lesson. Now, 42 years into being married, I still know that lesson, that I could have gotten bitter that day, and she could have gotten bitter that day, and she had every right to be bitter that day, and I wanted her to be bitter that day, and then I wanted her to listen to me really, you know, console her in her bitterness, and she wouldn't take the bait. She became better, and she taught me how to be better, and she taught me on that day that no matter what people say, you can't change them. You may never change them. Your graciousness, your goodness, your prayers may or may not ever change another human soul. But you can hand it over to God. 
and allow God the privilege of recompense, recompensating you, the recompense of reward, rewarding you for being Christ-like, rewarding you for the scripture that says what you've done to the least of these, you've done unto the Father God, you've done unto the Lord Jesus, and teaching me perhaps one of the greatest lessons of my life. And I want to encourage you today, are you hurting? Because I was hurting for me, knowing I was marrying into that family. And I was hurting for her, but she wouldn't take the bait. And I've been hurting a lot, including lately. And I've taken the bait a lot, even lately. But I have a decision and I want to encourage you that thank God we can choose this day whom we'll serve. I want you to choose, do you want to be bitter, better, or allow God the opportunity to make things right in your heart, in your soul, maybe even in the situation. I don't think to my knowledge all these years later that that situation was ever repaired. I don't think he ever apologized. I don't think he knew what he was doing. And honestly, I don't think he cared what he was doing. But Evelyn got the opportunity not to have that dagger in her heart or in her soul or that spear in her back, but she had the opportunity to allow God the balm of Gilead and the opportunity to teach a very young person a very good long lesson. I pray for you right now. Maybe someone's hurt you. I've been hurting lately over something. Maybe somebody has hurt you a long time ago and you've tried to bury the wound, but it is still fresh every time something, something happens or someone, someone comes along or a phone rings or this or that, or maybe you pass by your ex or whatever. I've had a lot of whatevers in my life. Some of them, I took the bait. Some of them, I didn't. But I believe we have an opportunity, even if it's old bait, I believe we have an opportunity to take whatever it is, hand it over to God and say, Lord, I repent for my attitude. I can't tell you in the last couple of weeks how many times I have repented for my attitude. And I can't tell you that in the next few weeks, I may not have to repent again. But the truth of the matter is, we're not perfect, we're human. God has not given us the measure of perfection, but he gave us the measure of faith. And I wanna take that faith today and hand it to the Lord and say, by faith, Lord, I am trusting you that you'll take care of the situation. Maybe it's not anything I said, but maybe there is some kind of situation. Have you ever heard that saying, the pebble in your shoe or the, the burr in your side or whatever they call it? Maybe there's just a pebble in your shoe. Maybe there's just a burr in your side. But whatever it is, I want to encourage you to think about not taking the bait, to think about handing it back to the devil from which it came. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brother and he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy even your church experience or your day. But instead, I want to encourage you to consider handing it over to the Lord and say, Father God, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I hand this one to you. I hand them. I hand what they did. I hand the situation. I even hand you my attitude and see what God does with it. Give God the opportunity to make your day count today in Jesus' name. I pray that for you today in every area of your life. I pray for God to heal your broken heart. I pray for God to heal your soul, your spirit, your mind, your will, your emotions. I pray for God to heal your body. I just pray for God to heal you. And I pray for God to apply the balm of Gilead and to really soothe you and heal you in every situation that you have faced, are facing, or will face. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Discover your true work is a discovery. It's steps. It's stages. There are tools that the Bible has given to us, and I like to convey those tools in everyday experiences. Lindsay's brand new book, Discover Your True Worth, Becoming the Woman God Created You to Be, is now available to order. I walk people through what I consider to be God ideas of how to get from where you are and at least get on the path of discovery to discover that you really are valuable. Lindsay has written this book to help you discover who you are in Christ and to show you ways to become the woman God created you to be. Discover your true worth is a discovery. It's steps, it's stages. There are tools that the Bible has given to us and I like to convey those tools 
in everyday experiences. You may think there's no way God can use you, but Lindsay shows how his power is made perfect in your weakness and it can help you be all that God has called you to be. Lindsay helped me realize that my worth is not based on anything I have or haven't done, but is purely based on what Jesus did for me and what he can do through me. My worth is based on what happened at the cross when Jesus' blood was shed. If you have something that is empty and you can fill it up and get you out of pain, to me, the best guarantee that I can ever have for my life is to have Jesus fill that void. This book has opened my eyes to see all that is within me, to be a woman in these last days that will make a difference. This book not only feels like a mentor coaching you, but it feels like sitting down with a dear friend. It's relatable, impactful, and so necessary for today. From a glance, discovering your true worth could seem like it would only apply to women in the church, but it can help anyone who's looking for answers. I didn't think that I could receive much out of a book written for women, but this book is packed with answers. I want this book to be a game changer. I want it to be a life changer. To request Lindsay's book, Discover Your True Worth, go to richardroberts.org or call 1-844-828-1412. Again, that's richardroberts.org. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the cross. What a lovely place to be standing at the cross. And I want to encourage you, if you would like to give us your prayer request, as so many people have done, and we pass by this all the time, and we pray over the prayer request, I would like you to go to oralroberts.com slash the prayer, oralroberts.com slash the prayer, uh, the cross. I'm sorry, let me say it right. OralRoberts.com slash the cross. You can always pray, but OralRoberts.com slash the cross. We are taking your prayer requests and it's all based on a vision that I had seen, a dream that I had had about Jesus saying, put it on the cross, give it to me, put it on the cross, trust the work of the cross. So OralRoberts.com slash the cross. Let us print them, let us get these here, let us put them on the cross and let us pray for you. And right now I pray for you. I put it on the cross, so to speak. We bring it to Jesus, whatever it is that you're going through right now. I pray for Jesus to be your healer, your savior, your Lord, your King of Kings and Lord of Lords in every way. I pray for God to bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Make it count today.